hello and welcome back to high school history today's video is going to be slightly different from what i've been doing uh, these are some quick instructions for you when you go for your exams now these are very important instructions there have been some changes since last year right so i thought this would be a good idea to share these changes with you right so this video is relevant for both class 10 and class 12 uh, candidates of board exams now this presentation has not been created by me this was created by abhilash kumar thakre who is uh, a pgt computer science teacher from kv number no. one in chindwada before we go any further do like and share this video with your friends and relatives who may be appearing for the board exams this time don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon uh, to get notifications whenever i post a new video you can join our closed facebook group uh, the link is given below in the description box and if you have any specific questions on this video do comment below let's go to the first instruction so entry to the examination center will start from 9 a.m to 10 a.m but if you're later than 10 a.m you will not be allowed to enter the venue of the exams the door of the examination room or hall will open 45 minutes before the time specified for commencement of exam which means if the starting is at 10 30 then they will open the examination room by 9 45 a.m so you are requested and advised to be in your seats at least 30 minutes before the scheduled commencement of the examination post 10 a.m you will not be allowed to enter you're supposed to bring your own stationery, pen, pencil and ink. Only blue black or royal blue ink or ballpoint is to be used. No other color is to be used in your exam papers. Now your seat will be marked with your roll number. Your names will not be written. So you have to go and locate your roll number and find your seat. You cannot leave the examination room or the hall without the permission of the assistant superintendent. Okay, so that is absolutely compulsory. Before you begin with your exam, you have to write on the title sheet of your answer book, the subject and the question paper code number. Okay, now this is very, very important. Answers shall be written on both sides of the answer book. Okay, that is both sides of the pages. That is what they mean. Now, if you write your roll number or put any special mark in the rest of the answer book, your paper could get cancelled. So don't take a chance. The only place where you're supposed to write your roll number is the front of the sheet where there will be a separate slip. So that is the only place where you write your roll number. Nowhere else. You're not supposed to write your name anywhere else. Okay, so please be very, very careful about that. Otherwise, your paper might get cancelled. You may have done an amazingly good paper. But if your paper is considered cancelled, you're considered failed. So please be very, very vigilant of that. So let's quickly go through the schedule of the exam day. Firstly, you can start entering the examination center by 9 a.m. You cannot enter after 10 a.m. Now, you'll be settled into your exam rooms around 9.45 a.m. So, 9.45 to 10 a.m., you're supposed to look for your room and settle down. Then, so in the control room of the examination center, the teachers there will start opening the papers at 10 a.m. Then, the last point of entry is at 10 a.m. You cannot enter the center after that. So, from 10 a.m. to 10.15 a.m., the staff there is going to check if all the students are there. Uh, they will do a checking of any material that you take inside. Best is don't take any bags. Just take your pencil box and your I card or hall ticket. And that is it. Then they will also teach you how to write your roll number. Okay. So pay attention to what the examiners and all the invigilators are telling you. Then at 10.10, 10, they will open the packet of question papers in the examination room and start distributing the question papers to you at 10.15. Then from 10.15 to 10.30, you will be reading the question paper and filling in whatever details that you have to do on your answer sheet. Then your writing time begins at 10.30 a.m. Okay. And your exam finishes three hours after that, which is at 1.30 p.m. Now, there are some students who uh, have various disabilities. They usually get one more extra hour. So, they will be writing till, till 2.30 p.m. Let's look at the bell schedule. So, 10 a.m. there will be a long bell which will announce that entry is now no longer allowed. Then they will ring the bell at 10.15 which is when you will get the question papers. It will be a single bell. Then 10.30 when the writing time begins, it will be a long bell. Then they will ring another bell at 11.30 after one hour, single bell. Then after two hours at 12.30 p.m., they will ring a bell. And then they will ring the bell at 1 p.m. to let you know that you have only half an hour left to finish the exam. And then 10 minutes before the exam is over, they will ring the bell again. And then at 1.30, it will be the final long bell when you have to submit all, the, uh, all your answer sheet to the 
invigilators in the room. Now the following points are very very important. Pay attention to this. You are not allowed any white nut. Okay, so be careful when entering the details in the answer script. Come OMR sheet. So you will be given instructions again in the examination room. So pay very close attention. I would suggest you first start with a pencil, and then if you see that there have been no mistakes made, then you color the O O M R sheet with pen. Okay, because if you make a mistake in pencil, you can always rub it out. But no whitener is allowed. You must make sure that you're not using any whitener on the data sheet. Then you are not supposed to open the seal of the answer script before the ten thirty bell. So follow all instructions very closely, right? Then when you are writing your name, do make sure that you leave one square between the name and the surname. Okay? Don't write in complete running. So first your name, then leave a box, and then write your second name. If you don't have sufficient space or sufficient number of boxes to write your entire name, then you write the maximum number of letters name in the available block by ensuring a gap between your name, middle name, and surname. Okay, so if it doesn't fit, don't worry. At least your first and middle name should definitely be there. Then make sure you're sitting at your assigned desk. Otherwise, you will get the wrong sequence of question paper and answer sheet. Remember, all question papers and answer sheet actually have a serial number. So if that gets mixed up, your marks may get mixed up with someone else. So be very careful about that. Use only blue ballpoint. Don't use gel pens. The ink tends to smudge. So you use a blue ballpoint pen. Now, if you don't take any supplementary sheets, usually we don't need supplementary sheets anymore. But if you do take, you will of course write the number of supplementary sheets used. If you have not taken any, then you must write nil. Don't leave that section blank. Then don't leave the examination room till proper clearance has been given to you by the invigilators there. Only when they say you may go, only then you exit. Otherwise, lot of problems with paper collection and all can happen. So every exam room has a clock. Therefore, any wristwatch is not permitted. So. Uh, Take care of that because nowadays you have smart watches. So I think CBSE has now made it a blanket rule that nobody is wearing any watch to the center, right? So keep this in mind. Uh, don't carry your watch. Every examination room is supposed to have a clock in uh, the rooms where you can check the time. Okay, so don't wear any wrist watches, especially no smart watches because they will be confiscated and you may or may not get them back. So don't even take that chance. Okay, then you will get something like an attendance sheet. It will look something like this. Your photograph will be here. Okay. And then your roll number, your name and surname, your parents' name. So check all of this. So when you get all of this, uh, when you get the attendance sheet, check all of these details. Okay. And then you will have the date of the exam, the subject code, and the paper. There will be a subject description. Don't worry about that so much. Now here you will have to write the question paper set. So usually there is set number one, two, and three. Remember to write the correct number. Do check the date of exam, subject code, and subject name. Otherwise. Your paper will reach the wrong place, and they will not be checked properly. Then you have a section for supplementary answer sheets. So mention here how many you've put. If you've taken nothing, then there'll be a nil here, and there there is a serial number. Invigilators will show you there is a serial number of the answer book. So write the serial number here, and here you are supposed to put your signature. Now I know this is going to be very difficult to remember all the time. But what you can do is listen to invigilators very very carefully. They will guide you through the process, which is why they tell you to come in as early. Okay. Then these are some of the latest changes which have happened. Now there is only seven blocks provided for you. Okay, seven blocks here. Now they've changed the format recently, so they've not been able to change the format of the answer sheet. Okay. So there is only seven blocks provided in the answer script, and this time your roll numbers is of eight digits. So roll number of both classes, ten and twelve, will either start from one or from two. So you write one or two before the box. This is what the box looks like. I don't know whether you can see it properly on the screen, but you will write one here or two here, depending on what your roll number is. So it will be before the box. So the first digit will be on the left hand side of the box. I hope that is very clear to you. And when you fill these bubbles, remember to color the whole thing. Don't leave any. Blank spaces on the corners; otherwise, the OMR reader does not read it correctly. Okay, so this is what your answer sheet uh, front page is going to look like. Okay, so be very, very careful what you're filling in. So here you will write the subject name, not your name, but you will write history or political science or social studies or whatever subject you're sitting for. Then here will be the subject code. There are three digits. Okay. 
the subject code is all there in your hall ticket. So take your hall ticket. Obviously, it is also mandatory to take your hall ticket. Then you write the date of the examination. So if you have an exam on the 3rd of March 2020, you write 03032020. Then what is the medium that you are answering your question paper in? If it is English, obviously you write English. If you are answering in Hindi, then you write Hindi medium. Then this is the code number of the question paper. Now the code number of the question paper is usually on the top left hand corner of the question paper. Right. So copy that number here. Right. And then set number. This is one, two, three, four. Usually you get three sets of questions. So you color in or tick mark number three or number two or number one, whichever is relevant. Then if you take any continuation sheet, this is where you write the number of continuation sheets taken. If you've taken nothing, then please write nil, N-I-L, nil. Now this is for physically or other disabl disabled children. Okay. So if there is no physical uh, challenges, then you write N-O, no, that there is no physical disability. If you have, then please write yes. Okay. And this then don't bother. Okay. This is for physically challenged, you know, blind students, dyslexia and so on, right? So if this is not applicable, so if you've written no here, then just leave this place blank. Don't even touch this. Now they have put this slip in such a place that we can't see what this is. So this will also be whether you need extra time. I think this is about extra time. So write no if not applicable and read the question carefully. This is how you fill the OMR sheet. So let us say for example, your name is Sun Jam. Then there are all the alphabets given here. So S, locate S and completely color this circle. Then A, completely color this circle. Then N, locate N, completely color the circle. Leave one block blank in the middle. Okay. Then J, fully color this. A, fully color this. M, fully color this. Right. Now, roll number. So remember, you have an extra digit this time. So what have they shown you? Write the extra digit on the left hand side and color this. Okay. Rest will continue 1, 6, 9, 4 and so on. Okay, then you have the subject code here. So if this of your subject code is 101, then 1, 0, 1 has to be colored in. And center number, usually the center number will be written on your hall ticket and also on the blackboard. So copy down this number carefully and then color in the OMR circles. Then you write the subject name here again. So history or political science, psychology, social science, whatever. Okay. Then school number. So this will be most likely your school number where you will write this. So if you are a four digit number, leave the first one bl blank and then write the four digits. Okay. So you will get a lot of assistance from the egg, uh, from the invigilators there. Now here again, you have to write your roll number in words. Okay. So it will be 1 crore 16 lakhs 94,000 and 43. So if you see here, it's written like that. So be very careful here. Then you will write your father or your guardian's name. And then you will put your signature at the bottom. Okay. This is not meant for you. So don't worry, which is why it's been colored out. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you've learned a fair amount. And don't forget, if you have any questions, just, just comment below and I will try to get back to you. Wish you all the best and bye-bye till the next video.